Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List. My name is Shane McAuliffe. You know, it's not often we check things off the list twice, but when I heard about one of my favorite museums in the entire state changing things up in Austin, well, I had to head to the capital city to see what was going on at the Texas Toy Museum. In early 2017, we stopped by the Austin Toy Museum on the east side of the capital city. The overly crammed collection of curated characters from the 80s and 90s has been put together by Caleb Zamet. And back then, he was just getting started. I think at my 30th birthday, I was like, I think I'm gonna open a toy museum, so. <laughs> Nearly seven years later, Caleb has grown up a little bit, but only in age. Well, last time I saw you, you were in your mid 30s, so did you hit 40 now? Yeah, I'm 41 now, so I grew up a little since the last time you saw me. I remember you saying your mom wanted the stuff out of the house, but my gosh. Yeah, when I was little, I had too many toys, and then uh, my wife wanted it out of the house. <laughs> did your mom ever get rid of your stuff, garage sales or anything? Uh, so our grandma definitely did. She tricked us and made us sell our He Man toys to get new toys, but I don't remember my mom ever selling things at a garage sale, unless we like were like, oh, we're done with this. But I was never done with my toys. My wife is cold, man. She'll get rid of my son's toys and be like, hey, where'd my Mario thing go? And I'm like, I'm just gonna go outside. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where it went. Uh, talk to your mom. I get that. I have a six-year-old and stuff's everywhere. So sometimes you gotta clean house a little bit. <laughs> Not when it comes to his collection though. Now known as the Texas Toy Museum and located just down Congress Avenue from the state capitol, Caleb's compilation has grown even more since we last saw him now occupying over 5,000 square feet of space. We've tried to round out some of the collections, like a complete line of G1 Transformers, a complete G.I. Joe, Real American Hero line, just kind of finishing those collections off. All the collections are kind of growing continuously, so eventually we'll need a bigger spot than this, too. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Most of these toys from 30 and 40 years ago are not just put in a case to be displayed, they're put into dioramas that take days to do. When I make these, I usually look at like the old Sears catalog displays or like the inserts that they put in with the toys and, and get a lot of inspiration for that. Rambo, Robocop, E.T. and the A-Team are all on hand, but the G.I. Joe collection takes up a ton of space. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of toys to set up and put a little bit of museum wax on their feet so they don't fall over a thousand times. And... <laughs> I love this because you have things flying, you have things underground, you have things in the ocean, and then of course you have the massive aircraft carrier, which every time I see is impressive as can be. Yeah, it's the largest toy ever made still, seven feet long, so nobody's topped it yet. Seeing this though, I gotta say thank you to my parents because I think I'd be a lot more G.I. Joe's than I realized, man. I had the jet, I had the blue jet, I had the hovercraft. I had a lot of these things, it was awesome. Yeah, they were great toys. Me and my brother had them too, and then we blew them up like gummies. <laughs> <laughs> more of a 90s kid? The collection of Ninja Turtles will take you back. And then we have the Ninja Turtles diorama that we just made for here. Added a bunch of buildings, still need to get up some of the flyers, but this is mostly done. Just the Ninja Turtles from the first toy line and the second toy line and even the 2012 toy line all mixed together. When it comes to my childhood, He-Man, Thundercats, Star Wars, and the real Ghostbusters collection brought me back to the good old days. This is what I miss. This I wish my parents had never gotten rid of is the old Ecto-1. Oh yeah, that's a good toy. My cousin smashed mine when I was little. Oh. But this one I got signed by Ernie Hudson, so it's wow. at least one Ghostbuster signed it. Well, there you go. Uh, Ladies, don't feel left out because Caleb has expanded his collection to include a few of your favorites as well. Yeah, we kind of were a little bit light on the girl toys upstairs, so we definitely needed to round that out more and add more Jim and the Holograms, Barbie, uh, Popples, uh, any sort of other line that people have been requesting, we've tried to add. You'll also find a lot more video games at the Texas Toy Museum, and a mission lets you play all you want. I love this though. I would love to sit my son in front of this or my daughter and say, okay, it's called the Oregon Trail, play. Yeah, I see a lot of that, like parents teaching their kids about the Oregon Trail and try and make it all the way. A few people make it all the way, but not a lot of people make it with all their people, because, you know, at least somebody gets bit by a snake and dies. Oh, it's awesome. Awesome. Irish playwright George Bernard Shaw once said that we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Well, at the Texas Toy Museum, you can put yourself back in a time when playing was part of life and just for a moment, feel young again. 
Does this not get old, having to deal with people's nostalgia and hearing everybody come in and saying, I had that, I had that? Like, no, I enjoy bringing back people's childhood memories for them because, you know, it's all locked away somewhere in there. And it was a good time for all of us. So we all need that remembrance of simpler times. So cool. Makes me feel Thanks. like a kid again. Yeah. Doing what it's supposed to. <laughs>